our work right now on the planet is to bring honoring and sanctity to the invisible just as much as the visible. The invisible results are things like feeling good, things like feeling connected, things like our health, our well-being, a feeling of joy, pleasure. Embodiment can't be faked once you're in an open state where you actually can see through a clear lens. You know, you're not clouded by fear, you're not clouded by the amygdala, you're not clouded by society's news and all the fear-based stuff, and you're just with you. Then you get to decide where you think we actually are. Energy is information. We're here to experience the full spectrum. That worthiness is hard for you. There's nothing wrong with you. It is a muscle that we kind of have to learn how to access. You are not disempowered and you have power in every area of your life all the time. I believe that chronic illness is an opportunity for us to heal. Health, it's a choice. Listening to your body if you so choose. My prayer for the world would be that they would know the infinite love of God. Aloha and welcome to the Body and Soul Wisdom Podcast, formerly known as the Embodied Healing Self Podcast, with your host, Jen Mons. Join me each week for soul-inspired, conscious conversations around awakening to your soul purpose through five-element well-being. Thank you so much for joining in. Yo, 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 what's up, my podcast community? How are we doing? <laughs> Clearly, I'm feeling a little giddy today, I guess you would say. Yeah, how's it going? How's everybody doing? How are you doing, really? Like if you, I wonder, I really do. I'm noticing, and, and I think I'm always noticing because of the nature of the space I've created to be able to witness to and observe is that, you know, we're always in like the flux of life, right? Like the ebb and the flow, the expansion and the contraction, and neither one is right or wrong. There's no labeling. It just is what it is. I love to invite people into the space of noticing that when you think you're in a contraction, you're actually in an expansion because you're preparing for the next level of expansion. We can think of it as like giving birth to a baby, right? Like how contracted, they're actually called contractions, before you actually birth something new into the world. So today I'm going to talk about how to know when to take action. Let's just settle into that question for a moment. How many of you experience doubt, fear, maybe even imposter syndrome around making decisions? I've shared throughout many different episodes and I've had a lot of amazing guests on the show that have even talked about some of these principles such as Kate Northrup. I think that was episode 51 about cyclical living back in 2019. And I've and even Xavier, I loved his his our podcast together on just allowing ourselves to make decisions from our gifts rather than our wounds, like really diving into the gift of shadow work. I'll drop those two links in the show notes. Some of my favorite guest episodes, although I've had many. But just kind of noticing for a moment what comes up for you when it's time to make a decision. Because de decision does create momentum. I talked last week about the law of diminishing intention. So if you didn't catch that episode, that's a great compliment to this episode. I talked about intention deficit disorder, what it is, what the law of diminishing intention is, which is the longer that we wait to do something, the less likely it is to happen. On the other hand, what we can choose to see is that when we're ready for something, like we start speaking a language, we start hearing words, we start noticing synchronicities, the teacher that we're looking for is right in front of our face, the support, maybe even the soulmate that you're looking for. But if you are too busy and distracted from the life 
around you that is supporting you, well, you're just missing. You might just be missing all the things that are there for you. You might be missing your soulmate. You might be missing a collaboration, a business opportunity, a teaching moment, an opportunity to work with someone, a coach, a healer. I mean, really, this happens. That's why it's important to stay in our intention. So there's a balance though, right? There's a balance between the aligned yes and the sacred no. And one of my most heavily recorded or downloaded podcasts was one that I did on the toxic cycle of people pleasing. So I know that I have people pleasers in my audience. I myself am a recovering people pleaser. I had no idea that I was a people pleaser because on the outside, I was like super fierce and confident and, you know, I had a lot of courage. But then when you got really deep into my personal space, it was about how I was making decisions and why I was making the decisions I was making due to a part of me that hadn't healed yet, that wanted recognition in some way from the feminine. And that led me into a painful friendship relationship kind of experience where I was like, whoa, look at this. I'm actually a people pleaser. And And when we're people pleasers, we attract people who will want to take advantage of that. It's kind of the way it works. So it's really important. What's the balance between that aligned yes and that sacred no? What's the balance between trusting and not beating ourselves up when things don't look like in the moment they're supporting us? This is really important because this is what really separates people from moving forward or just staying where they are. And a couple of things that you've heard me say throughout my podcast, I mentioned Kate Northrup. One of the things that I learned from her in our episode is asking myself the questions, is this aligned with my values? Is it the right time? Does it have to be me? And just using those simple three questions to help you make the decision. Not beating yourself up when it doesn't go or look the way that you thought it would, even if you feel it. Sometimes this happens. Have you ever had this happen? You're getting ready to make a decision on something. Let's just say like you're going to buy a house, okay? And you can like see it and feel it. And you're like, yeah, this is the one. Or or maybe a romantic relationship. Like, yeah, this is the guy. I'm going to marry him. It feels so good. I can see it. I can feel it. I can see my future. And then all of a sudden it doesn't work out. Like what just happened, right? Those are the moments where you're invited to trust even more. And I know it feels hard. I talk about this a lot in our in the prosperity course. Prosperity consciousness is embodied trust. And it's in those moments when the results aren't there that you're really getting clarity on your level of trust. It's that last 1%. It's easy to trust when things are going well. It's fun. And then as soon as you feel like you're not being supported anymore or as soon as things in life are not showing you, in that moment you believe, you choose to believe that you're not being supported, where is your trust? What would happen or what happens when you shift to believing and knowing and trusting even more in that moment that what you thought you wanted wasn't meant to be, that maybe something greater is working for you. I could think of a hundred moments just in the last month where I either witnessed this happen with my clients or in my own life, in my personal life. I mean, even as a parent, like I have a two daughters doing amazing things. My older daughter is finishing high school On the big island of Hawaii, at Hawaii Preparatory Academy, one of the best investments and decisions we ever made, and I miss her so much. And then my other daughter, younger daughter, is a competitive surfer on the 
U.S. Junior Olympic surf team doing amazing things at a young age following her dreams. And you don't get to that place that quick because you're winning all the time. Because I'll tell you what, you learn so much more when you don't win. Same thing in life. When things don't go your way, when relationships end, when, I I mean, let's just, what could this look like, right? Health crisis, financial crisis, relationship crisis. We don't even have to go crisis. Let's just say setback. All of those things, yeah, it's an opportunity to beat ourselves up if you want to, if that's what you want to do. But what if you just chose to be like, okay, that didn't work. What can I learn from this? I'm not going to make myself wrong. I'm tired of making myself wrong. What can I learn from this? And what did I get clarity on? Thank you for this painful experience because I'm no longer choosing to look at it as a mistake, but as an opportunity for clarity on what is not working. That's it. No wrong, no failure. Clarity on what didn't work. Thank you. Opening the door to a new path for new possibility. And there you go. In that moment, you get to choose. Do you sit and ruminate on what's not working? Or do you take that next step? You sort of like, okay, you breathe through it, you process it. Give yourself permission to feel it. Don't ignore it. Don't avoid it. Otherwise, it's just going to just keep coming because it's going to be like, okay, really, like, did, did, you, did you get this? Because if you didn't, it's just going to happen again in a new way because that's what we're here to do. Like, our souls are here to evolve. That's what we're here to do. And so in that moment, you get to decide, am I going to sit with this and just spin in this and beat myself up or am I going to kind of turn my head just a little bit, right? Like, there's two paths. There's There's the hard path and the easy path. And we just kind of go back and forth between two because we're just evolving and growing. And so are you going to shift over a little bit and take a step the other way towards who you're becoming? Are you going to sit in the energy of all the things that haven't supported you and where you are now? Or are you going to be grateful for all of the learning experiences and the clarity to help you move forward? So let's get to the meat of what this is about. How do you know when to take a line to action? Well, you have to be willing to decide. You have to be willing to take action. First of all, your decision creates momentum. And you have to be willing to just take that action and know that it might not turn out the way you want it to. Even if your action is a non-action. That's still an action. Indecision is still a decision. It's just a painful one to sit in. So every choice, whether it's indecision or decision, creates next steps. It creates an energetic, you know, frequency to the path that you're working on. So just know that. You sitting in indecision is your decision in that moment. It's just not serving you because it's it's the it's like chaotic energy. It's just kind of moving around and it's just not it's not intentional. And I've shared with you ways to, if you listen to the, to last week's episode, the law of diminishing intention, I shared steps with you to get clear on how to be intentional. And it's, there's really sustainable steps, quite simple things that we can do every day. Eat, breathe, nourish, move, journal, meditate, things like that. Find a way to come into stillness. Listen to yourself. This is where you get to build the muscle of your intuition. So I want to speak a little bit about that because, you know, I had a, a beautiful woman in a, in, a, in a mastermind that I'm in just reflect back to me. We, it opened the conversation around like having our faith and intuition. And so I'll share with you, in my opinion, how we can blend this together and I did a podcast on it probably a couple years ago are you there god it's me your intuition and we can have both 
It's the voice inside us, the voice of the Holy Spirit, really, like the energy. Energy is the language of spirit. And so a lot of times we're all saying the same thing. We just have to have our words attached to it. But the moment that we exclude other people because of their choices, right? Like we do this with politics and religion all the time. The moment we do that, then we're just closing ourselves off to possibility and learning. It's really just a different language or way of saying similar things that were really very similar under the surface. We have different external experiences, but we have a lot of the same needs and beliefs underneath. So it's important to take that time to be intentional, to build that muscle, create that space for stillness through meditation or prayer or journaling or all three. There's really no way around it. Setting that intention every day will give you so much more clarity to take that aligned action, to make that clear decision, whether it's an aligned yes or a sacred no. And the sacred no can be challenging for the people pleasers. Because you have to ask yourself, like, why? Why am I saying yes? Does this Is this aligned with my values? Do I have to be the one doing it? Is it the right time? Remember that the energy that we enter a relationship with is the energy that expands. Whether it's a relationship with a person, relationship with food, with health, with money, with your career, whatever decision you make, whatever energy you're entering that decision with expands. So if you're entering the decision with indecision, that expands. If you're entering that decision from a place of scarcity or fear, that energy expands. If you're entering that decision, which a decision creates a relationship because it creates momentum to growth, to into the next It's either a relationship with God or source, yourself, a person, an opportunity. Like decision creates momentum to facilitate growth in a relationship in some way. So if you enter that decision from a place of trust and knowing growth, then that's the energy that expands. That's how it works. Decision creates momentum energetically. So that energy that you're making that decision from expands. It's super important to be aware and to take ownership of ourselves in our decision-making process. It's, that's part of being sovereign, having that authority, that deep inner knowing. So knowing when to make a decision and take aligned action starts with your willingness to be intentional, your willingness to create a daily practice of checking in with yourself. You have to be willing to slow down enough and facilitate that relationship between you and your inner guidance system. Between you and God, between the voice that you hear, between your body wisdom. Like, this is so important. When was the last time you did this? And when you... Create the intention to do this. Let's just say we start today with five minutes a day. Over time, this just becomes part of who you are. It do, it's not even anything extra, quote, to do anymore because you become the experience. You embody the person. It's like healthy eating habits. The more you choose to eat healthy food, it's th- that's just who you become because you don't even think twice about going out to eat to a place that is not healthy. You you just don't because you embody health. So it's it's the same with the energy of intention and really having clarity. Clarity on your decision making comes with your intention every day. So it's it's a small practice. So what I'm saying is How, in this moment moving forward, are you going to create space in your life every day 
to practice clarity and intention because that space creates and builds that muscle of trust in your decision-making process. It's really simple and it's it it's non-negotiable. That's what we teach through Five Element Wealth is really building the muscles as multidimensional beings. You can think of like your soul wisdom imprint. That program facilitates growth physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. Five elements to living well. That's the foundation. And if you choose to live with intention sustainably with these small steps, you become that person. You don't even have to think about it. It's not anything you do. It's just who you are. Nothing to prove. It's just who you are. It becomes easier. And you build that muscle of clarity, trusting your inner guidance system, trusting your intuition. Because intuition is built on trust. And so is the energy of prosperity. What most of you are seeking is trust. Believing in yourselves. Overcoming the doubt. You have to be willing to commit the time and intention. It's not much. And what follows that is just practicing non-attachment. Just not making any decision that you believe to be right or wrong mean anything about you. You just get to practice making decisions with intention. Sometimes it looks like it's working out. Sometimes it doesn't. Who knows what is right in that moment? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're on your path, moving forward, one small step each day, building trust. Yes, you do build trust through the opportunities that don't look like they served you in that moment because guess what? Later on, you find out that they did. Sometimes it's a month later. Sometimes it's six months. Sometimes it's a year, five years, ten years. You don't know. I don't know. But you just keep moving forward to the person that you're becoming. And just let go of all the stories. Let go of all the judgment and the stories of what anything even means about you. Because that's all created in the mind anyway. What you think about yourself based on a decision isn't what somebody else thinks. Everybody gets to choose what they think. And honestly, all of that thinking about what it means is probably not serving you. It's okay to sit with, sit with, just noticing, really checking in with the body somatically is what I would encourage you to do, just to kind of sit with the possibilities, but allow your body, allow your intuition to guide you. And so one of the questions I like to ask myself is, what's it going to feel like when I take this action? What does it say about me when I make this choice? What does it say about me when I don't make this choice? Because that's where the stories and the judgments come in about who we are based on past experiences. So let's just bring it to the surface and be curious. What's the story around this? So if I decide to do this, what does that mean? And if I decide not to do this, what does it mean? Sometimes we can, you know, most of you are probably familiar with listing the pros and the cons, like just getting super clear, writing it on paper. What does it mean if I do this? What does it mean if I don't? Why? Why would I say yes to this? Why would I say no? When I look at my values, is this decision getting me one step closer towards that bigger goal, that bigger vision, that bigger intention? Is it supporting me in my truth and who I'm becoming? It's really easy to get caught up in the little things every day. So I'm talking more about like bigger decisions and remember releasing the how. Just knowing that if, if, if you're being shown support or even if you can't see it but you can feel it or you're willing to receive support, 
You don't always have to know the how. But what you're seeking is seeking you, Rumi. And one other quote that I really love, my coach always says this to me, to know and not do is to not know. So just kind of notice, I think that's a Buddha quote, just kind of notice if this happens, right? Create the space to trust yourself. But there's so many things that we know because we're so good at gathering information. But are you in paralysis by analysis? I talk about this in my prosperity course. We talk about, you know, all the different sabotaging behaviors and beliefs and actions that we take when it comes to owning our source towards financial freedom. Because money speaks. It speaks about your values. The way that you spend it speaks a lot about how you make decisions. And it's an energy, just like it is on how you choose to use your time. Two really great tangible resources that, will, that are showing you and reflecting back to you what your values are, truly. Like if you want to know what your values are, are you consciously investing or unconsciously spending? Are you in alignment or are you busy? Are you in time management or energy alignment? Those are two different shifts. I like to teach about energy alignment and conscious investing. It's kind of next level expansion. So, you know, just notice, like, sometimes we know something's going to happen, but we just, this is kind of a saboteur too. We just want to wait for it to just like happen magically. But this is my thing about manifestation, that it's such a buzzword that is misused. Like manifestation is not just sitting there and waiting. Manifestation is knowing the possibility and aligning to the frequency of the possibility through aligned alignment. That might be action or in action, but most of the time it includes you being a part of it and making the choice to say, yes, I'm in alignment with this. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> So thank you for joining me again, just to circle back, knowing when to take action. What, what do I need? What is the space between the surrender and the sacred no and the aligned action and the yes? It's, it's creating that space for clarity, creating the time for intention, and and learning to work that muscle of trust which leads to your intuition which leads to support it's all of those things and then the fourth thing is just remaining unattached to the possibility and you just get to keep trusting and if you really want to amplify your experience allow yourself to be supported like, why not? What do you have to lose? And when I look back over my life and every major transition that I ever went through, every, I kind of like to call it like a soul upgrade, expansion, sort of like next level, which for me followed very challenging experiences. When I look back, Every, every every penny was worth it. I never, ever did I say, even, I can remember being asked, like, even when I was investing in heavily in, in healers and integrative wellness back in 2009 during a survival mode for health crisis, I would, I would never look back and say that it wasn't worth it because we learn and we grow, even if there were things that I invested in that I'm not sure created the result that I wanted, that didn't mean that it, that it wasn't right. I just got clear and more and more clear about what worked for me and my family. And this is what we get to do. But if you're not doing that, then you're not giving yourself permission to grow. So I will close and just saying, find a way to be supported Whatever that looks like for you. Opening up, being vulnerable with your family, your friends, your spouse. Finding a group to support you. Maybe a women's circle. Women's circles are just so awesome. They're just so powerful. 
or in my experience, I love leading them. Magical things happen. I mean, because most women are just seeking that permission to actually really be deeply seen and heard in the truth of who they are versus how they're showing up in the world. That's like so powerful, you guys. That's what I do in my retreats. It's what I do in my circles. It is like, it's like the gates just open up and wow, it's like my favorite thing. So finding a group that supports you or finding a hobby, just something, just taking some action towards alignment. So thank you for joining again. Whatever that decision is that you're navigating right now, give yourself some time to create space. But don't sit in the indecision. And the key is to practice this every day. So when the de- when you're met with the decision, it you know, like don't you don't have to sit with it because that's the law of diminishing intention. You sit a little bit, but really The longer you wait, the more likely it's going to be a no because your thoughts come in, your head comes in, like telling you all the reasons why you shouldn't do it. But if you practice this daily, you develop this muscle of your intuition just really feeling like, ah, that's, that's what it feels like when it's in alignment and that feels really good. And, and it's like a place of like freedom and ease And you'll know because when you make that decision, you just, you start stepping further and further away from second guessing yourself or feeling frustration after you make a decision. Like you just get, like those things aren't really in your circle anymore because you continue to take aligned action. You move further away from that energy of feeling stuck and frustrated because you questioning whether you made the right decision or not, like the uh, remorseful buyer type energy. You continue moving further away from that, the more space that you create, the more aligned action you take, the more intention that you walk in. And if you're looking support for this in any area of your life, I mean, this is what we do in our community through a couple of different ways. The most gentle way to enter into this energy is through our daily devotion journaling membership. From there, we expand into Five Element Wealth, which is currently a six-month program where we go through 12 different levels of expansion in really creating our life map. And then from there, we expand into prosperity, which is really about the fifth element of well-being and prosperity consciousness, which is embodied trust, but also healing our relationship to money and amplifying our values in the world. And then, of course, if you're listening and you know you are a high-achieving, purpose-driven woman ready to redefine what feminine leadership looks like in your life, you're ready to really let go of the overwhelm, the burnout, standing in your own way, feeling unfulfilled, you're ready for more confidence, clarity, and support, and just feeling really resourced and redefining life on your terms, success and wealth and love, health, wealth, and love, then you might be the perfect person for my mentorship. That's who I co-create with. We'll drop that link in the show notes too. I know I don't remember to always put those links below, so I will do that. It's by application only. Just to make sure that we are aligned for one another. Because sometimes I have clients that come to me and I'm not the right person. And sometimes I know other people who might be. Because that's really the energy I come from, is alignment. And it's okay if we're not meant to co-create together at this time. Maybe there's someone else who is a better fit. And I am happy to share the people that I know and the work that they do. Because that's what prosperity is. Because when you win and I win and we win, the whole world just becomes a better place. And that's what I want. And I'm sure you want that too. All right, my loves, have a wonderful day. Thank you again for joining. It's been super fun having this conversation. I hope I've given you a couple nuggets of wisdom and have a fantastic day. I'll see you again next week. Aloha. 
You're listening to episode 172, Navigating Decision and Aligned Action from a Healthy Place. Thanks for listening in. This is your host, Jen Mons. The content of this podcast is to educate, inspire, and inform you of pathways to an embodied healing self. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice from your medical doctor, therapist, registered dietitian, or nutritionist for any questions you may have regarding your diagnosis or condition. Friends, and thank you so much for joining again each week on the Body and Soul Wisdom Podcast, formerly the Embodied Healing Self Podcast. I am so deeply honored to share this space with you every week. I know that there are many other podcasts that you could be tuning into, and our community is expanding and growing more with each new episode. I'd like to invite you to come on over to genmons.com forward slash tribe and receive some of the wonderful gifts that we have for you, a meditation bundle, energetic alignment, five element wealth, prosperity, consciousness. We have a ton of different gifts available for you to enjoy. Now, we have one small favor to ask in order for this podcast to get into the hearts and souls of like and light minded people. We need your support. We would love your review and would love it if you'd head on over to jenmons.com forward slash podcast to leave a review or leave one on iTunes so that we can continue to share the love beyond out into the world. Thank you so much again for joining in. We'll see you next week.